This is John with WesleyGospel.com. Welcome. Um, today I'm going to talk about the new birth and business activity and uh, how, how do these things relate, you know, to a vlog on biblical economics? Well, directly. I mean, uh, biblical is the new birth and economic is business. So uh, how do these two things work together? Um, well, uh, there's a great sermon by John Wesley called The New Birth, and I believe it came out in 1760. It's very well done. Um, I looked it over uh, this morning. And in The New Birth, he says that a person's ears are opened, and he's now capable of hearing the inward voice of God. Uh, which says, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you, and go and sin no more. Um, this is the gist of what God speaks to his heart, although he might not hear those actual uh, words in, in English words. Um, he, he feels truly confident that the Spirit of God has has made, made it, took up residence inside of him and, and said these things. Um and so there's a there's a charismatic element there. There's a Pentecostal element there, a mystical element, a supernatural paranormal element there of having a possession of the Holy Spirit and knowing that he has forgiven you and um, also encouraged you to live a holy life. So there's definitely a sense of the Spirit of God being inside of you, uh, in, in, your, in your mind, in your heart. Um, uh, if you don't have that, you're not saved. It, uh, you know, you can't have just an, a, an intellectual decision to put your faith in the cross and everything's going to be done, done, and done. Okay, um, salvation is not a subscription. Okay, oh, you're going to be a subscriber to Christianity? It's not a magazine subscription. Okay, you've got to have the Spirit of God. You've got to have the Spirit of God to be saved. Um, and if you don't, well, frankly, that's your own fault, um, and uh, there's a lot of reasons for that, why people don't have the Spirit of God, but probably the main reason is they're resistant to it. Um, it says in Acts 7, 50 to 52, um, well, it was actually started at Acts 7, uh, verse 51, you stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. In other words, they're still pagan. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. That, that proves to me that Stephen was an Arminian uh, because he said that people can resist the Holy Spirit. All right. Calvinists say that it's impossible to resist the Holy Spirit. Stephen Stephen would have disagreed with Calvinists. Okay, uh, he says that they're stiff-necked, their hearts and their ears, their spiritual hearts and their spiritual ears are pagan. They're untrimmed, and they always resist the Holy Spirit, just like their dad and their grandpa and all the people who came before them. You know, if you're stuck in a mentality where you're copying your ancestors. Right? That's naturalistic thinking. If you're stuck in a mentality where you have no voice of God, no desire to feel the Spirit of God, resistance to the Holy Spirit and all other things of the spirit world, you are not going to be saved. You are just not going to be saved, according to the Bible. Um, so, when the Spirit of God does come into a person, um, it's not a subscription to Christianity. Okay, you're not signing a subscription. Okay, there is a paranormal element here. There is a Spirit of God going on here. His ears are then being opened, uh, and he is capable of hearing the inward voice of God, <clears throat> which will say, <clears throat> "Be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. Go and sin no more." Uh, this is the essence of what God speaks to his heart, although perhaps not in these very words. 
and now he's ready to hear more. Please tell me more. Right. Uh, he feels in his heart the mighty working of the Spirit of God. And uh, he's he feels feeling, tangible feeling, inwardly sensible of the Spirit of God in his heart. And he's conscious and he feels it. And it is a peace which surpasses all understanding. Many times he will feel such a joy in God, in his spirit, that it is unspeakable and full of glory. In other words, it is inexpressible in English words. It is so amazing and powerful and otherworldly. He feels the love of God shed abroad in his heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given to him. Romans 5.5. 5. And all of his spiritual senses are then exercised to discern spiritual good and evil. Does this mean he's going to be perfect for the rest of his life? No. Does this mean he can't resist the Holy Spirit after he's received it? No. Does this mean that he is? In, it's impossible for him to lose the Holy Spirit? No, not at all. If you can resist the Holy Spirit, you can most definitely lose the Holy Spirit. How do you resist it? Well, it's easy. It's easy to. Uh, Acts 7.51, it's right there. If you want to resist the Holy Spirit, all you have to do is be stiff-necked. Okay, there is no Calvinism. There is no for forcing of the Holy Spirit into people against their own free will. It's ridiculous. People can resist the Holy Spirit. They do it all the time. Um, they just basically, in one way or another, say, I don't want the Holy Spirit. Right? And for people who consciously avoid Pentecostal churches and Pentecostal worship, you, you, you truly wonder, are, is that what they're saying? Is that Are they out there saying, I don't want the Holy Spirit? Now, I understand there's a lot of things about Pentecostalism that are weird. I understand that. Somebody could easily say, well, I don't want to make weird sounds with my mouth. Or I don't want to be in a prosperity preacher church. Uh, or I don't want to be with a bunch of hypocrites. I don't want to be with a bunch of backwoods hillbillies. They could say all kinds of stuff. But at the end of the day, everybody knows that the Pentecostals got the Holy Ghost and nobody else does. I mean, that's the kind of the general feeling. That if you really ever really wanted the Holy Spirit, you know where to go. It's a Pentecostal church. So are you saying, I don't want the Holy Spirit? Because ain't going to get it any other way. Why did the Pentecostal churches get started in the first place? Because they weren't getting the Holy Spirit anywhere else. They were getting a lot of head knowledge and academic teaching and subscribers to Christianity, but they weren't getting the Holy Ghost and no paranormal experiences. That's why the Pentecostal churches were started. There was Nobody was feeling the presence of God anywhere. At it, and any church ever, um, and so that's why Azusa Street and Pentecostal movement started. There was enough people that wanted to feel the Holy Ghost. Now, what's everybody else like? Well, they're stuck in Genesis 2:17. They're not experiencing the new birth. They're experiencing the spiritual death. Genesis 2:17, God said to Adam. You must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. You must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Well, guess what? Is God a liar? No. But right after Adam ate the fruit, he lived for over 900 years. God said the day, the very day that you eat... Of it in the King James version, it says, "The day you eat from it." In NIV, it doesn't takes the word "day" out. The day you eat from it, you will certainly die. And not and then and then he goes to eats it. He eats it. He doesn't die. He lives for 900 years. Well, what happened? Well, die was being used in a different way then. 
God meant it. You died a spiritual death. You separated yourself from the Spirit of God that day through your disobedience to my commandments. So therefore, commandment keeping is one of the elements. Loving of God's commandments is one of the elements of getting the Holy Spirit. People who resist the Holy Spirit, you will find, are often people who resist the commandments of God in their life. They have an antinomian, rebellious attitude. Now, people who don't have the Spirit, they seek their comfort in money, usually. They seek their comfort through capitalism, which is crazy, because how can capitalism bring people comfort? With all those nasty people out there, those mean, gruff, real men who shun learning and book knowledge and are obstinate and worldly wise like those characters in uh, Pilgrim's Progress, uh, going to be a real man. As fast as ever money comes in, Wesley said, they lay it out either in land or enlarging their business on the danger of increasing riches, point five. So that once, as soon as they make money, they buy some property or they put it into their business. In modern times, it's usually being put into stocks or in mutual funds. And all these things have their, their purpose, but Psalm 62, verse 10 says, If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. There are a lot of reasons why people have to increase riches, either in a small way or in a larger way. Once you reach the point of millions, watch out. Because now, once you reach the $1 million mark, you need to really watch out. Because um, most likely by that point, you have addressed college tuitions, medical debts, automotive concerns. Um, you probably own a house in full. You probably have more than enough set aside for retirement, emergency funds, starter homes. Um, you probably have passive income coming in from dividends. Um, and uh, you probably have all the insurance you need. And um, you might even have something going in estate planning for your kids. You, you probably are going on vacations. Life is good in the economic sense. Uh, and you sit back and, and you drink your lemonade and you say, life has been good to me. Instead of saying, God has been good to me, you say, life has been good to me. And uh, but what you're not doing is you're not getting the Spirit of God. Uh, you're resisting the Holy Spirit, being stiff-necked and stubborn. You're, you're doing exactly what your forefathers and ancestors did. And uh, you're not letting the love of God be shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. You're not repenting of the ill-gotten ways that you used in order to get all this money that you have now. Your heart is completely dead. Your conscience is seared. You have no spiritual senses. You look at homeless people at the gas station, and then you look the other way. Your heart is hard now. What a problem you have. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to have to make some radical, extreme changes or you're doomed. You are spiritually doomed. Everybody, any man knows that they're doomed if they're spiritually, if they would just look at themselves spiritually. Look at yourself spiritually for a moment. Have your riches increased? And if so, have you set your heart upon them? It's one thing to have all these, you know, spending categories and and have have all this stuff budgeted aside financial responsibilities and all this and learn all the techniques all the little scientific techniques of how to make money how to make more and more money it's 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 a ride okay it's a ride at times exciting but afterwards it's like yeah but are you even born again there's so much about the business world and capitalism and self-interest, competition, greed as a motivation, uh, uh, deception, cruelty, you name it, that, that just runs directly counter to the Holy Spirit. Completely worldly, satanic, devil, evil, carnal, worldly, natural-mindedness, spiritual death. 
the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The day that you eat of it, you will surely die. And um, to me, I look at capitalism, I see that's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to me. That is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Capitalism. Because that that is, God says, don't eat from that. I have a better way for you to take care of yourself. God bless you out there. This is John with WesleyGospel.com.